This is section 522. We're going to be evaluating logarithms. And so in this lesson, we're going to learn the idea or about how we can convert between exponential and logarithmic form and like what that means. And then we're going to evaluate a logarithm. Now, in the previous lesson, we introduced this idea of evaluating a logarithm. And we did a lot of it in our heads. All right, we kind of looked at it. We saw how we could manipulate the logarithm a little bit. It wasn't too bad. Now, in this scenario, we're going to be, or in this lesson, we're going to be looking at more complicated versions of being able to evaluate a logarithm. The reason why that's useful is because sometimes you're not going to get nice numbers. It's just kind of like, you know, we're, we love using like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, integers, but the moment I say 1.5 or a fraction, 3 sevenths, start getting a little uncomfortable. So we're going to be looking at some of those logarithms that could make you a little uncomfortable, but there's a little trick that I'm going to go over that's going to help us with it. First, let's talk about this idea of exponential and logarithmic form. So we're going to convert between exponential and logarithmic form. The logarithmic form would be like this. How do I know? There's a log exponential form would be like this. How do I know? There's an exponent. And so that's how we're going to be able to recognize which form it is based upon how it looks. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert each of the following to a logarithmic equation. So here's our first one. Right now this is in exponential form because it has an exponent. So to convert it into logarithmic form, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that base 2. We said logarithms and exponents are inverses of each other. So whatever that base is, I'm going to take the log of that base to both sides. So what's going to happen is now I get log base 2 of 16 equals log base 2 of 2 to the x. Now the log base 2 and the 2 they're going to cancel out because they're inverses. And so I just have log base 2 of 16 equals x. That is my logarithmic form. Let's look at another one. So for this one, here is my exponent here. And so my base, which is 10, that means I'm going to take log base 10 to both sides. And so then I get log base 10 of 10 to the negative third equals log base 10 of 0.001. Well now over here, because I have log base 10 and 10, those are inverses of each other, they're going to cancel out, and so I'm going to get negative 3 equals log base 10 of 0 0.001. For this one right here, that e to the t, I'm going to have to get rid of that e, so I'm going to take log base e to both sides, and so I get log base e of e to the t equals log base e of 70. That log base e and the e will cancel out, and so I'm going to get t equals log base e of 70. So for these three here, I converted them to logarithmic form. How do I know? My final answer has a log in it. Now let's look at converting them to exponential. So here, it's in logarithmic form. Now I want to convert it into exponential form. And so what we're going to do is we're now going to take the base of whatever that log is to both sides. Now this is kind of weird. And the reason why it's weird is because we're not multiplying both sides by a number, we're not dividing both sides by a number, it's, we're kind of like inserting it as a base. So now this becomes 2 to the log base 2 of 32 power equals 2 to the fifth. Think of it almost like reverse Tetris. Instead of coming top down and pushing the peas down, you're coming from the bottom up and pushing it all up. And so now these are inverses of each other, so they're going to cancel out. And so I get 32 equals 2 to the fifth. Log base a of q equals 8. Okay, so whatever that base is, which is a, so I'm going to take base a to both sides. So then I get a to the log base a of q equals a to the eighth. The a and the log base a cancel out. For this one, 
I have that log base T of M, so I want to take base T to both sides. And so now the inverses cancel out, and so I get T to the X equals M. So that is converting from uh, logarithmic to exponential form. Now this is one of the more important ones because we're actually going to be using this to help us with these evaluating, uh, with being able to evaluate this. All right, so we'll start with an easy one, right? This one already, I'm pretty sure some of you guys can look at that and be like, oh, I already can just do that in my head. But let's fall, I'm gonna use this new shortcut way not a shortcut, but um, it's like a trick that we can use to be able to help us. So we walk into this thinking, I don't know what this equals, right? So I'm going to say it equals some number. And so I'm going to say x. Don't know what it equals. And so now what I want to do is I want to convert this statement here into exponential form. So if I do that, then I'm going to be taking base 6 to both sides. And so now log base 6 and that 6 are going to cancel out. So I'm going to get 216 equals 6 to the x power. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, like, well, now why did I just do that? If you rewind a little bit, if you remember, when we have exponential equations, if we make the bases the same, we can set the exponents equal to each other. And so now, how can I manipulate this 216? That turns into 6 to the third power. And so now, since the bases are the same, I can now set the exponents equal to each other. Now we have to be a little careful here. And the only reason is because if you look at this original problem, there's no x. So because there's no x in that original problem, my answer can't have x in it. And so I could say, you know, log base 6 of 216 will equal 3. So what I did here is the first thing is I converted it to exponential form. And so that's why I set it equal to x, so then I can convert it into exponential form. I took the, whatever, the inverse bases to both sides. And then I use the property of exponents to solve, which says that when the bases are the same, you can set the exponents equal to each other. Let's look at another one. So I have log base 2 of 1 8. Don't know what it equals. So I'm going to say it equals x. Now converting it into an exponential form equation, take base 2 to both sides. So now inverses will cancel out. And so now I have 1 over 8 equals 2 to the x. So now the property of exponents says once the bases are the same, I can set my exponents equal to each other. Well, how do I make this 8 in terms of 2? Well, I can say that that's 2 to the third, because 8 times 8 times 8, right? Or, I'm sorry, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then now I can move that to the top. And so if I do that, that becomes 2 to the negative 3 equals 2 to the x. Now that the bases are the same, set the exponents equal to each other. So I get negative 3 equals x. Well, there's no x in the original problem. So as part of my answer, you just can't include x in it. This is really where having this pro this property is going to help us because we look at that and we're like what the heck so equals to some number I don't know and so now I'm gonna take base one-third to both sides it's gonna cancel out here so I get 1 over 243 equals one-third to the X so now how can I manipulate this? Well, I don't like the 3 in the bottom, so I can move that to the top. So I get 3 to the negative 1, and then I'm going to multiply that with the x. But now I need to think, OK, here's the hint. Well, it's 3. So is 243, what is that in terms of 3? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81, times 3 is 243. So that is going to be 
1 over 3 to the fifth. So then if I move that to the top, that's going to become 3 to the negative 5. Now that the bases are the same, set the exponents equal to each other, divide both sides by negative, x equals 5. But remember, can't have x in my answer. So that it needs to be my final answer. Probably easiest just to then just say log of 1 third of 243 equals 5, right? Easiest to say that. All right, I want you guys to give this one a shot, and then we're going to go over it. Okay, let's, log, let's work through this. So we equal it to some number. We convert it into exponential form. So I'm going to take base 216 to one side. So I get 6 equals 216 to the x. Well, 6 equals, this is going to be 6 to the third. Now that the bases are the same, set the exponents equal to each other. Well, there's a 1 here, so 1 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3, I get x equals 1 third. Now remember, can't have x as a part of our final answer. So we'd have that as one third. This one's a little different, but I want you guys to kind of think about that. Go ahead and evaluate this one. All right, so on this one, this two and this log two just automatically cancel out. And so you're left with eight. Yeah, it's probably like, oh man. <laughs> it's a good one though. All right, so let's close today's lesson. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned about how to evaluate logarithms. We also learned about the two different forms, exponential and logarithmic, and how to convert between them. So what is the difference between a logarithmic and exponential form? Well, a logarithmic form has a logarithm in it, or a log. An exponential form has an exponent in it. And by using the inverse base process, we can convert between the two. What did we do to the logarithm to evaluate? Well, we set it equal to some number like x. I just chose x as my variable. And then from there, we uh, converted it into exponential form to be able to solve it. So this does conclude our lesson. If you do have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.